point, I'm sure you're an expert when it comes to motion, how things move, how far they move in a certain direction, how fast they're moving, how quickly they change the rate at which they move, and how long it takes for them to do all those things. But what causes objects to move to begin with? Well, I'm glad you asked. Today, we're gonna to talk about forces and how they affect the motion of objects. A force is simply a push or a pull, and they cause objects to accelerate. So forces cause objects to start moving and to stop moving and to change direction. Forces are acting on objects all around you, things that are moving and things that are sitting still. Without forces, how would our hearts move blood throughout our bodies? How would electrons get pushed through our phone chargers to charge our phone? How would we remain level to the ground here on Earth? Today, we're gonna to talk about three important laws discovered by this guy. And these laws govern how forces affect the motion of objects. And all you need is a balloon and some other stuff, but I'm gonna let them to because I'm not at work right now. So what you need, balloons, a straw, tape, some way down, and string. Okay, so now we're gonna measure our meters of string for the lab. All right, so we're gonna put the piece of string through the straw and tie it to this little sensation on here. Okay, so now you have to blow up the balloon and click it. Now we're gonna take the balloon, take the balloon to the straw. Make sure it's hard to horizontal. For the hot person balloon. <laughs> mm. uh, my storage. So I'm going to take the cup to the bottom of the balloon, like so. Now we're going to time the balloon to see how long it takes to get across four meters. After the first trial, we blew it back up and now we have to add 20 grams to the balloon. Why would you do that? Oh my God. Now we're going to calculate our velocity and acceleration. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Now, our goal in this lab was to figure out how the mass affects acceleration. So I'm sure some of you are probably wondering, why the heck is velocity here? <laughs> and why can't we just use the Newton's second law equation? Well, if you look at this equation, there's one thing here that we actually don't have a value for. The net force. Now, while you are blowing the balloon up, hopefully to the same amount each time, and we know that the force is constant, if we don't have a value for it, you can't use it. So we're gonna have to calculate acceleration the old fashioned way, using change in velocity divided by time. But how do we get velocity? Well, we have displacement and we can divide that by the time as well to get velocity. So we'll do the first trial and I'll let you do the rest on your own because I'm not about to be here doing math all day. So it took 2.16 seconds for the balloon to travel four meters when there was no mass added. Four divided by 2.16 seconds you will get, the velocity was 1.85 meters per second. Now, to figure out how that velocity changed over time or the rate at which it changed over time, 1.85 divided by 2.16, you will see 
that the balloon's velocity increased by 0.85 meters per second every second, or its acceleration is 0.85 meters per second squared. Now, if all of that was a little confusing to you or you need a refresher, feel free to check out our other video on speed, velocity, and acceleration. There's also a handout for this lab if you want to do it on your own or answer the analysis questions. Also, if you want to learn more about forces, check out our website, www.crsci.org, for more information about forces and Newton's three laws. Stay tuned, subscribe, share, comment, and I'll see you next time. Wow, uh, Isaac, you did all that. Mm -hmm. That was a great run. Okay. Okay. That was great.